Brett and Tammy Jo Parker of Columbia, South Carolina, were the picture-perfect family. They had good jobs and good friends. They were regulars at church and at University of South Carolina football games. But as 48 Hours correspondent Richard Schlesinger reports, they also had an open secret that would lead to murder. The neighbors might not have known, but in an upstairs office in the home of this successful couple, there was a thriving illegal gambling operation. Brett Parker worked for a medical sales company, and um, we learned that he was a sports bookie. When he finished his day job, with help from his friend and employee, Brian Kapnerhurst, <laughs> Brett Parker took phone bets on baseball, basketball, and football. Brett's father's a bookie as well. If I wanted to place a bet in Columbia, South Carolina, would it be hard for me to find a bookie to take the bet? Probably not. Business was good, and the cops looked the other way. It's not a serious crime where we um, dedicate a team of people to go out and investigate it. Until one day when a 911 call got all of their attention. On uh, April the 13th, 2012, Brett Parker called 911 saying that his wife had been shot by an acquaintance, somebody that he identified as Brian Kappenhurst. And what happened? Who shot your wife? A friend of mine, Brian. Parker told police Kapnerhurst killed his wife, then forced him at gunpoint to open his safe, but that he'd managed to shoot Kapnerhurst first. Is he still there? I shot him. I think I killed him. I think he killed him twice. We have a law in place. You have a right to, to use deadly force if you think your life is in danger. South Carolina is one of 33 states with a form of what's called a stand your ground law, the kind of law that was widely discussed in Florida's George Zimmerman Trayvon Martin case. Is this a case in your mind where Brett Parker was standing his ground? Absolutely. If someone has a pistol painted at your head, orders you up the stairs and you have to go to a safe, I think your life is a little bit endangered. Investigators are still trying to put together the pieces to this puzzle. But 97 days after the killings, police were sure the puzzle had been solved, and Brett Parker was charged with the two murders. You had lots of money, high stakes, bookies and gambling. You had sex and you had murder. This was the O.J. Simpson case of Columbia. Richard Schlesinger is here with us. What a story, Richard. Now tell me something. If I wanted to make a bet on Duke right now, can I find a bookie to do that in South Carolina? I would check with Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, the fact is I could probably find somebody to take your money, but they'd probably prefer that you bet on the home team. But it wouldn't be as easy as it was before this case, actually, because after this happened, the police who sort of had this laissez-faire attitude towards all the bookies in town really cracked down. There have been a couple of, of uh, arrests, a couple of convictions, so it uh, might not be as easy as it might be. But. So what changed investigators' mind that this wasn't a bookie just standing his ground? That's a, th that was a really interesting yeah. factor in this case because it turns out that you can't use the stand your ground defense if there's a crime being committed where the, where the shooting takes place. And since bookie uh, taking bets mm. is still technically illegal, mm. Charlie, yeah. um, <laughs> um, it, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have applied in this case. Is this Richard Pick on Charlie Rose yeah, Day? Probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, actually, I don't do much betting on sports. Uh, I bet on South Carolina, and things you know. like that. Yeah, of course I do. So what's the big question that this piece answers? <laughs> well, you know, this was a, this was a great uh, example of uh, good old-fashioned police work. You know, yeah. we get so used in the, in these days to, you know, uh, forensics and stuff. And there were some very interesting forensics in this case. Yeah. But these guys worked this case for months and months mm -hmm. and months and, and just, just cracked it. What were some it's of the nice. forensics that, cha that discredited the story? Well, what was interesting, I, I don't want to be too specific because we want the story to unfold, but there was a, a wound on one of the, one of the victims that showed showed that uh, the story that the police were being told mm. probably Didn't match up. isn't true. Well, we All look right. forward to learning the full story. <laughs> Richard Schlesinger, thank you. You can see Richard's full report, A Bad Bet, on 48 Hours, tomorrow at 10, 9 Central, here on CBS.